Hello and welcome to another edition of SpikeMark Tech Tips. I am Mike Wade, Director of Technical Services here at Creative Connors, and today we are talking about queuing and target positions of turntables. We field quite a few emails and calls from people using SpikeMark to control revolves, specifically in regards to positioning. The biggest challenge to create queues in SpikeMark for a revolve is wrapping your head around the concept of absolute positioning and how that affects the machine, which has no physical limits. It's, it's rare to incur, encounter an obstacle with absolute positioning in, say, a deck winch or a curtain track or an elevator, because the unit will most always be traveling between zero and some other position, say 240 inches. With a turntable, there are a few additional factors to consider. Before we dig into what all this means, let's take a moment to lay down the framework for setting up a turntable. I'm a fan of confirming <clears throat> clockwise movement is counting forward and counterclockwise moving is uh, movement is counting in reverse in spike mark. This just makes it a little easier for me to communicate with designers, SMs, and directors. You know, moving a turntable is a challenge, something that goes in a circle, and so setting up the dialogue to say clockwise and counterclockwise, and then keeping that positioning straight in your head as the programmer is really important. Uh, if you need to change direction of the motion, please refer to spike mark manual or the stagehand manual. All right, let's get started. So there's two basic methods to approach programming a turntable. Embracing the absolute positioning, only really useful if your turntable only needs to spin between say like zero and 180 degrees. But more likely uh, working with coworkers who only really want to work with relative. Spike mark references zero as home. All turntable moves have a bearing on zero. A clockwise move will add degrees to the position, and a counterclockwise move will subtract degrees. Uh, for example, if the current position of the turntable is negative 360, as it is in Q100 in the sample show file, and the desired move is counterclockwise 315 degrees, the target position for that desired move will be negative 675 degrees. That's because 360 plus 315, 675. It's your job to interface with SpikeMark and to know what the correct target position will be for such a move. This isn't difficult to do with a calculator on a move-by-move -move basis, especially when it's done during a paper tech or from rehearsal reports. The real challenge comes, to, comes when a change is made to the target position of a turntable move uh, while in tech or preview rehearsals. That new target position will have a cascading effect on any cues down the line. Let's take a look at the example show file to see what happens. Let's say we get into tech and we learn that Q110 needs to be adjusted. The donut only needs to spin counterclockwise 300 degrees, not the 315 as originally programmed. No sweat, right? We can just change the target position from negative 675 to negative 660 and we're done. It's unfortunately a little more complex than that when you look down the queue list to see the, the future moves of the donut. As you can see in Q130, it is intended to move clockwise 360 degrees in sync with the turntable. Because we changed the previous target, we're now going to be off by 15 degrees. So we need to adjust that target to negative 300 in order to keep the total distance and time in the case of 130 correct. This continues to happen down the line. In a perfect world, we could simply adjust each Q target just as we did with the calculator or with our brain, uh, and all would be fine. Unfortunately, during the tech process, we're generally not granted the amount of time we need to accurately make these adjustments. Because of that, we recently developed a spreadsheet to assist in this exact challenge. Let's take a look at it now. The spreadsheet is built in Google Sheets, but can be easily downloaded as an Excel file if needed. Uh, in this case, there are three sheets in the document. Let's look at the template turntable calc to start. You enter the queue numbers down in column A on the left hand side. They'll magically appear on the other queue column. Uh, and then type or select the direction that you want the turntable to move, clockwise CW or counterclockwise CCW. Uh, and when you do select clockwise, it will turn that whole line blue. And if you select counterclockwise, it will turn it orange. You enter the number of the degrees for the move and see the target position change. It does all the math for you. Let's look at the donut calc sheet now, along with the sample show file. 
I've already added the cues for the example show into the sheet. Uh, the formulas are pretty straight, straightforward. There are a few if-then statements paired with conditional formatting to create an easy to use and read template. Let's make some changes to Q110 to see how, the, how it tracks these changes through the rest of the moves. Imagine, if you will, that we get to tech and it's decided that Q110 should actually move clockwise instead of the original programmed counterclockwise. Through the magic of the embedded formulas, we can get all the info we need by simply changing the direction from CCW to CW. Once we do that, we can watch the conditional formatting change color, and then we can also see all the target positions in the position column change, and they'll change all the way through. Now that we change that one cue, we can quickly go through the spreadsheet and adjust the remaining targets in SpikeMark. It's not only saves a pile on a pile of scrawled notes around the operator station, but it also reduces the chances of a miscalculated target position, or worse yet, a revolve which spins in the wrong direction. You may also notice on the cues where both units are traveling the same distance at the same time that the speed, A cell, and time all come back into agreement as soon as the target position is corrected. The example show file and uh, worksheet as an Excel file are available at the link below. That does it for today's tech tip. If you have any questions about today's tip or if you have a topic that you would like us to cover, please email support at creativeconnors.com.